Unfortunately, the biggest news in the TM Master Cup Series is not good. Canadian driver Scott Hamilton's injuries from the round of Brazil proved to be fatal. 2010 TM Junior Series champion is the first driver to be killed in a Master Cup Series race weekend since 2007. The tributes to Hamilton were pouring in. His mentor, Leonid Roderick, showed up to Decatur wearing Hamilton's helmet design. Zenus Racing sported all black colors in memory of Hamilton for this race and all of the Terra International Motorsports staff were wearing uniforms with the number 46 embroidered on it, a trend which swept throughout the entire paddock. On a happier note, the 2011 TM Lights Championship concluded yesterday, and Power Steering Incorporated finally had something to smile about as Thurston Blood claimed one of the TM Lights races and took home the championship. The final TM Lights race is notable for having a photo finish between Tyrone Stanley and Kevin Dwyer in a race that had been a complete crash fest. I'll now hand it off to Dan who will go through the entire starting grid for the round of Decada. Thank you Lance, I will now go through the starting grid for the 2011 round of Decatur starting at the back. Starting 42nd is Azuma Kazuyama, the third driver for Star Team Nomoto, and on his inside is Rene Ricarmier making his first start for Majestic Motorsports, he'll run full time for them next year. The outside of row 20 is Jacob Card subbing for the injured Jacques Bouvier, and on his inside in car triple nine is Marcus Leonard of British Columbia. And on the outside of row 19 is Jason Teller Jr., another Canadian in the Lycoya Striker SS, and on his inside is Nick Dawson. This is the first start for both Dawson and the McDowell Motorsports team. On the outside of row 18 is Dale Roswell. Doesn't have a drive lined up for next year. The 1989 champion has two wins at this track. And on the inside of row 18 is Zach Duff in car number two, making his final start for Volpe. The outside of row 17 is Avery Holtzman, the only Gessler in the field. And on the inside of row 17 is Andreas Laporta, one of the Dark Horse qualifiers making his cup debut. The outside of row 16 is local boy Greg Woodard grew up in this area. And on the inside of row 16 is Blake Kamphausen for the Phillips Autosports team. Kamphausen will drive for Team Star USA next year in uh, car number 15. The outside of row 15 is Alan Hodges making his final start as a full-time driver. And on the inside of row 15 is Ike Durbin. No relationship to Tony Durbin, the 2007 cup champion. The outside of row 14, Alina Vario who made a hero of herself at Cariala, and Tony Durbin on her inside in car number 33 makes his final start for that team. Brian Sendak makes his only start of the year in car 51, and Packer Carroll is driving the Alexis Sports car on the inside of row 13. He's moving to Volpe next year. The outside of row 12 is Yamino Tenshi of Japan. She moves to DeGarmo next year, and on her inside is Lewis Kingston, who she's switching rides with. Kevin Dwyer will drive for Team Star USA full-time next year, and on his inside, Matthias Taub moves to Gessler next season. Alexis Rainsford on the outside of row, of row 10 moves over to Champ Car full-time next year, and on her inside is Ryan Matthews, makes his first start in the series. On the outside of row 9 is Zelda Ashby. She stays where she is next year in that 55 car. And on her inside is Yulia Nasova in car 34. Outside of row 8 is uh, Chris Davenport in car number 28. And on the inside is Ethan Everett. We don't know where he's going next year, but we really hope Everett gets a good drive somewhere where he can show his true potential. On the outside of row 7 is the only Xenos to qualify for the race, Robert Dorian in the all-black 47. And on his inside is Adrian Devereaux, the championship leader. On the, inside, on the outside of row six is Scott Bates, hasn't won a race in almost two years. And on his inside is Michael Sykes, who makes his flash racing debut. On the outside of row five is Cesar Villanova, driving for Gutierrez. And on his inside is Gordon Kim, a long shot qualifier for the hectic racing team. On the outside of row four is Leonard Roderick, wearing Scott Hamilton's helmet for this race. And on his inside, in car number 231, is Jacob Eichholz, an Arla frontrunner. On the outside of row three is Ian Cooper in the bright orange 777 car, returns full-time next year, and on his inside is Arto Kakadin in car 14. The outside of row number two is Ben Atkins, a European Dash Cup frontrunner, made a couple of Arla starts, and is now making his Master Cup Series debut in brilliant fashion. On the inside of row two is Vladimir Simonov, the third driver for Katsev, makes his final start with the team, we believe, and on the outside of the front row is Brazilian Luciano Savarol, who moves over to Alan Hodges' team, and taking out the Delano Pole Award, and a championship contender, is Chris Johans in car number 64. He needs to make up 45 points on Adrian Devereaux in order to steal the 2011 Master Cup title. Decatur has always brought surprises, and some of those can be found on the did not qualify list. Craig Mummer, car number 6, he won his only CRL race at Portland, another road course in Oregon. Gaspar Souza, car number 40, made his first start here. Kurt Pliskin, Scott Stoiler, and did not pre-qualify list. Tyrone Stanley won one of the TM Lights races this weekend, Allie Riggs, Bobby Porto, car number 15, 
Jose Luis Martinez, Anthony Griffith, Mike Whitmore, won at Road America this year, Danny Savin, two-time Coriola winner, Damian Snyder, David Krikorian, Kevin Monroe, Phil Borland, Patrick Henderson, Justin Robinson made his first start here last year, Franz Redleck even. As you go even further down, Tom Delgado in the 837 car did not even make it past pre-qualifying. So that just shows you how tough it is to get into the, one of these races, some of these big races. You can be the one of the big names in the series and not make it into the field. On the warm-up lap, Yamino Tenshi in car 831 hit the pit lane along with Alina Vario and Zach Duff in car number two. Looks like some people saw the TM Lights races and noted that there was quite a bit of carnage in turn one, and they wanted to avoid that. Chris Johans in car number 64 leads the field down to the green flag, and it uh, doesn't look like anyone's aligned back there at all. Yeah, some of the... Uh, wow, that's one of the worst starts I've ever seen. You see Cesar Villanova chops all the way over to the other lane immediately. I don't think that should have been given the green. That should probably have been waved off, but here we come into turn one. Johans and is going to get the lead... Of uh, he's got it over Savarol in car number three. So Chris Johans has the lead. Looks like everyone played nice over there. Down in the snake. That is a very, very tricky corner, a set of corners on this track. Michael Sykes in the 04 car. This is, uh, well, let's talk about not lined up at all. This 04 car, Michael Sykes did not get a very good start. Adrian Dever on the 26 car is jammed up behind the 04. And I noticed Ethan Everett made a jump around Michael Sykes in that in the 04 car, I don't think that is going to be deemed a legal start by the 11 car. So we're going to have to see how that uh, turns out. Michael Sykes definitely got a problem. I think he may have picked up a puncture on the warm-up lap. It's really hard to figure out that if you have one of those until you really get it up to speed. So a tough break for Michael Sykes, who had been looking so strong all throughout the weekend. And it's all falling apart right now. You see he's dropping all the way to the back of the field in the 04 car. Running with Arto Kekkonen in car number 14. You see things get a little hairy here. There is Simonov coming. Oh, little contact there between Arto. He's not playing nice with the 54 car. Here we are on the left side camera on the uh, 14 car, which most of the cars in the field have mounted on them, which it's really nice to see. You see a little contact with the 54 car. Didn't cause a, didn't cause a crash, thankfully. Simonov comes back at him. A little further back in the field. Here we have Azuma Kaziyama and Andreas Laporta. Oh, Laporta saves that car. That was headed for a one-way trip to the Armco walls over there. And looks like Laporta just saved it and managed to save our red pylon over there. We Those usually get knocked over quite frequently during the round of Decatur. They did last year at any rate. The end of the first lap, Chris Johans on the 64 car has the lead. He's got a fairly big lead over Luciano Savarol, Ben Atkins, and Ian Cooper as they cross the stripe. You'll also notice a little further down, Scott Bates made an awesome start in the 88 car. Chris Davenport in car number 28 also coming through the field along with Alexis Rainsford. Ryan Matthews in the 76 car uh, also coming uh, up through the field. Gordon Kim in the 500 car is clearly going the wrong way. The 500 car did not get a very good start. Gordon Kim is sliding backwards. I think that it was a qualifying setup on that car. There's Ethan Everett doing the uh, penalty that he was assessed by the officials for that illegal start that he made jumping around the uh, 04 car and Adrian Dever on the 26. Here's Ben Atkins, the Dash Stock Cup front runner, and here is the sentimental favorite for this race, easily Robert Doran in the 47 car, putting on one of his best drives of the year so far. Clearly very motivated. Well, he just lost the spot to Caesar Villanova there, but uh, Dorian has been very, very competitive all week, and I'm surprised he didn't get in through the uh, top 10 qualifying, frankly. This 47 car has been very fast, and hopefully he'll be able to string a good result together for that team. They really uh, need a good result uh, for their morale. Adrian Devereaux is running at 28th place, and he will not win the championship if he doesn't advance his position. But if there's one thing Devereaux is known for, it's making very optimistic passing moves, especially when dealing with slower cars. Devereaux has not been a big fan of lap cars, ironically, but... Uh, it's, you see he's coming around Brian Sennett. Great shot off the back of the car there. Almost some contact with Brian Sendak in the 51 car in turn three. As Sendak slides backwards a little bit. But Devereaux cur currently marching his way towards the front. And he is trying to get um, get into the points so he can ch get that championship. Here he is Jason Teller Jr. in 27th place. A little contact with Lake Camphouse and gets mugged by Marcus Leonard. And the Lycoya spins off. And there's the other Lycoya. Greg Woodard who grew up around this area in car number 41 spins off the course Woodard spun all by himself and um, well he's clearly having quite a bit of problems like Koya has not handled well in the and here's Dale Roswell this is a very good move by Roswell uh, for 34th place 
Uh, it's a shame that it's not for anything further up the field, but Dale Roswell still showing he uh, has what it takes, even if he uh, doesn't qualify all that well. Michael Sykes in the 04 car. I don't know why he hasn't come into the pit lane yet. I don't see why Flash Racing is keeping him out in the racetrack. Um, as this decision makes absolutely no sense to me, and that's a shame because Michael Sykes has had a very good weekend so far. But then again, Flash Racing does have two of their cars uh, competing for top 10 points positions, and that is the third car for that team, so I can't really blame them for uh, not focusing on his car. Lap 7, a Avery Holtzman in car number 95 is in 20th place. Adrian Devereaux right behind him in 21st, getting around 19th placeman Ryan Matthews in that 76 car, who's been having a very good weekend so far. Devereaux is going to really make give Matthews a hard time here. little contact there. Nick Dawson in car number 73 has been caught by all of the cars that have hit the pit lane already. So something has clearly gone awry with the 73 car. Either that or Dawson's team used everything they had just to make it into the race and didn't leave uh, too much for when they actually made it into the field. We've had some teams do that before, and I wouldn't entirely be surprised if some of these smaller teams that were in a similar situation. It's a good effort by Nick Dawson to get into the field, and I really think that that shows what talent he really has uh, just getting into the field and not necessarily what he's doing right now, which at the present moment is sliding backwards. Zach Duff pitted on when the field was coming to green, so did Yami no Tenchi in the 831 car. Uh, both of them topped off with fuel, we believe. Uh, maybe not the best race strategy, but then again, Robert Dorian used that used a very similar strategy a couple years ago and did very, very well. And here is Yamino Tenchi, little contact with the 73 car. Chris Johans pits on lap 13. It's not great fuel economy, but that's still within the pit window. We'll have to see how that turn shakes out. Ben Atkins and Arto Kakinen follow suit, and I see quite a few other cars pitting as well. I see uh, Villanova back there in the uh, white and teal 60 car. Chris Johans in the 64 car needs to finish on the podium, I believe, in order to win the championship. Luciano Salvaral stayed out an extra lap. So did Ian Cooper and everyone else behind them. Uh, Ian Cooper in that 777 car, I think, holds the lap record around here still uh, in that uh, EFR journey. And the EFR journey cars have been very, very fast all throughout the weekend. Here's Ike Durbin in the 86 car coming into the pits. There's, oh, contact with Azuma Kazuyama. Is that a penalty, I wonder? But that's not in the pit lane. That's in the pit entrance. Uh, huh. I'm not sure how that one's going to go. Oh, contact! Jacob Eicholtz and Robert Dorian! Oh, huge tragedy for the uh, 47 car. Dorian is having a very strong run. Now he's got front end damage. I wonder if uh, how that's going to affect that car. Here's Tony Durbin. Oh, right in front of Marcus Leonard. Gee, those two don't get together. Get, uh, get along well. Anyway, they collided in Japan. Uh, to uh, Durbin's detriment. There's more contact in front of... Oh, I think that was the Dorian incident there. Leonard Roderick has always been known for being very good around Decatur, and that includes some very optimistic passing moves. We're in the pit exit lane, and Roderick just snaked right around Vladimir Simonov. That is... That is classic Leonard Roderick. Um, well, that is some of his classic... What he's known for. Roderick being very optimistic, leaving the pits, and passing another car. So, Leonid Roderick making a hero of himself just in that little sneaky maneuver there, as Luciano Salvaral has come out of the pit cycle with the lead of the race in car number three. The Brazilian driver has been making a very good name for himself this year, has not won a race. Uh, a lot of people expected him to, but he's moving over to the Honda's Walter Racing Team, and that, of course, is a very good organization over there. Ian Cooper is currently running in second. Ethan Everett in the 11 car, well, his race has not gone all that well, and uh, it's a shame, really, because Everett's now off cycle, and he's pitting again. He is way down the, way down the field. Michael Sykes in the 04 car. Looks like they've uh, fixed whatever malady was affecting him. Not oh, contact! Michael Sykes does not want to go a lap down. Michael Sykes in that 04 car almost wiped the leader of the race out. I don't think that's going to sit too well with uh, the officials and certainly not with the Bolton Speed Stable. As Luciano gets a... Tr as Michael Sykes, I think, forgets the fact that there are no full, full course yellows on road courses these days. There's Jacob Eicholtz in the 231 car, who's uh, also going a lap down in the uh, E231 chassis. As Sykes begins to streak away from Salvaral, and uh, Michael Sykes is clearly determined to stay in the lead lap no matter what, even if he screws over the leaders. We're on board with the 04 car, and you can see 
that the uh, 231 car is really holding up Savarel. Now that was a uh, that was a pass for position. Sykes uh, did pass the 231 car for position. You'll see that uh, Savarel is getting jammed up, and that's uh, well according to the rest of the field up. Adrian Devereaux has gone backwards. He's all the way back in 24th place. I don't think his pit crew is winning any awards today. That's for sure. But uh, Devereaux won this race last year, and I wouldn't be too surprised if Devereaux ends up sneaking his way all the way to the front. Uh, anyway, because this 26 car is, of course, very, very fast. It's going to be tough for Chris Johans to hold off Devereaux's charge. Devereaux, I think, only needs to finish something like 10th or so to lock up the championship. Yulia Nasova in car number 34 is running in 15th place. We're not quite sure if Nasova is staying at this team or returning to the Volpe Racing Team next year alongside Packer Carroll. Nick Dawson in 35th place has finally given up on whatever problems he was having, and he hits the pit lane out of off schedule. I'll have to see how that turns out. Christian Hans is coming to lap Greg Woodard. The 41 car has clearly been having handling problems in the SNCC. The Lycoya was very good at Indy, but it uh, just hasn't really suited this track as much. See the 41 sliding around. Chris Johans! Whoa! That was um that was almost throwing away the championship quite literally. Would have thrown it into the wall. Scott Bates in the 88 car is on the attack though. He sees this bunch of cars. He's coming around Ian Cooper. There's Ben Atkins in the Arca Brake Zag car. And uh, I and Bates has got himself in the perfect position to get around Atkins in the Eichholz Auto Sport car. And now he's got Greg Woodard in front of him and Woodard. Uh, as a Woodard, very sportsmanlike, is going to move out of the way, it looks like, uh, in the uh, 41 car. He's trying to stay out of everyone's way, but that's not always possible. Ian Cooper counterattacks, gets around Ben Atkins, and now makes a move to get around the 41 car. You'll notice Michael Sykes in the 04 car is back there. The leaders have finally gotten around him and put him a lap down. And Sykes is uh, racing for position with the 41 car. Kevin Dwyer, the son of six-time Master Cup Series champion Benny Dwyer, is going to be driving for Team Star USA. This is a huge break for the Minnesota driver. It's great to see another great American driver come through the ranks and finally make his name in the Master Cup Series. A lot of people have said that Kevin has all the talent of his father and then some. So we hopefully we'll be able to see what Kevin Dwyer can do in the Team Star USA cars next year. Those cars are generally very strong and we'll, it'll be great to see some fresh new American talent take to the track as we see uh, him getting around Vladimir Simonov and Cesar Villanova. Arto Kekin is jammed up behind some lapped cars that are racing for position. Robert Dorian in the 47 has just appeared right there. Michael Sykes is right behind, is behind him. Oh, contact with Woodard. He was uh, uh, trying to get around Dorian for position. It's kind of hard to tell the lap cars to move over when they are having a legitimate battle for position with each other. Um, you kind of have to be a, use a bit more discretion, but then again, it also creates a big pack like this where you have multiple cars racing for position with each other. Now, Michael Sykes is familiar with that. He's been doing a lot of sports car racing where you might be racing in a huge pack of cars sometimes and only be uh, only really be racing one or two of them for position. Robert Dorian in that 47 car is, clearly has lots of damage and uh, he's kind of an obstacle at this point, but then again, he is racing that for, the 41 of Woodard for position, so it's hard to blame him. Chris Davenport in the 28 car on the attack. Davenport uh, nearly won the TM Lights title, but he ended up throwing it away on a couple of incidents and then was taken out by Garrett Colby in the uh, TM Lights finale. As uh, Dorian now looks like he's going to finally lose position to Woodard and in the uh, black and yellow car as Woodard tries to get clear him around the outside. And now you see most of the leaders have finally cleared those two back markers and Woodard has, has also cleared Dorian and is pulling away. Chris Johans pits on lap 27. In car number 64, it doesn't look like as many people are willing to come with him this time, though. I wonder if that's going to be costly. Luciano Savarol pits on lap 28 as well. Or, uh, rather, he pits one lap after Johans. Pits on lap 28, and uh, pitting with him are the two Team EFR cars. Scott Bates and Ian Cooper, and they've been very quick coming in and out of the pit lane on the entrance and exit rows, and that can be critical later in the race. Savarol comes out with the lead. Scott Bates up to second in the 88 car, so staying out that extra lap is clearly, benef is clearly beneficial. Chris Johans is sliding backwards. Ian Cooper is fourth, and Cooper is. we know that Cooper, once he sees someone in front of him, uh, like Chris Johans, he really goes on attack mode, and especially when you put the carrot of uh, getting two EFR cars on the podium together. Blake Kamphausen up to 15th in the 49 car. Great job by Kamphausen. And you'll also notice Andreas Laporta is having a very strong run as well, as is Packer Carroll in the Alexis Sports car. 
Here is car number three. It is uh, Luciano Salvarov coming to lap Nick Dawson on lap 31. He comes into the snake. He breaks a little too late. Salvarov's throwing it off from the lead of the race. Luciano has just thrown away the has thrown this one away. He had this one in the bag, and now he has just thrown the car number three off the course. He had this one almost all but locked up. All I needed to do was bring the three car home, but he braked too late, lost the rear end, and now he finds himself in the Delano signs. Here is another replay from the overhead view. And here it goes. Luciano slides it a little bit too much, tried too hard to get by a back marker, and threw it off all by himself. A costly, costly mistake that has undoubtedly cost him his first Master Cup Series victory. But Scott Bates is the beneficiary. Scott Bates in car number 88 has got a huge lead over Chris Johans, who's now moved up into second place. So Scott Bates could break the winless streak. Wouldn't that be amazing if he did that here today? Chris Davenport in car number 28 is having a great run. He's running in eighth place. Luciano Savarola has dropped all the way back to 12th in car number three, getting passed by uh, Cesar Villanova there in the uh, 60 car. Oh wait, Savarola holds off the 60 car. So it looks like there's still a little bit of life in this car and Luciano is not really willing to just roll over and play dead and let everyone else by. He's willing to fight for those positions. He wants points and he's going to have to give some of them up. Adrian Devereaux in car number 26 is just on the outside of scoring points. Uh, by my count, if Devereaux finishes something like 16th or 17th, he'll take home the title. We'll have to see, though, how this race unfolds. Chris Johans in car number 64. He's running in second place. He's got Ian Cooper right behind him. And Johans really needs something bad to happen to Scott Bates in front of him, something that will take Scott Bates out of the lead because I don't think Chris Johans is going to be able to close the gap because Scott Bates has got a huge lead over the 64 at this present time. So Johans in that 64 car is really hoping that Ian Cooper just sort of vanishes because I don't think he likes being pressured by Cooper as much. Here's Arto Kekkonen in the 14 car with his uh, teammate for next year, or, or rather teammate for this race only, uh, Michael Sykes right with him. And uh, Michael's, oh, Sykes Ian Kark and Arto Kekkonen made contact, Kekkonen into the wall, right in front of traffic, ooh, look out, look out, look out. Oh, that's Davenport got him. Oh, Chris Davenport, nowhere to go. I'm not quite sure who was at fault there. Arto slid very wide, and Nick Dawson may have moved over to give uh, Michael Sykes a run, but there just wasn't enough room. Uh, Sy Michael Sykes was racing Nick Dawson for position. Dawson tries to fend off the 04 car. Arto slides very wide, comes back on the track, but Michael Sykes is there. I'm, I'm not quite sure if you can blame that on anybody. Now here is Chris Davenport in the uh, 28 car. Now there's the, there's the crash in front of him. Now the officials chose not to hand a penalty out of any sort, which I think is the right thing to do. I think this was sort of an unavoidable collision. But Davenport is going to be the first car to drop out of the race, and we don't have many laps remaining, and that is a huge disappointment for Chris Davenport, who was sort of auditioning for the for a full-time Volpe drive uh, today. Not sure if he did enough to get it because there are a couple of other drivers in contention for that spot. Yulina Sova throws the, uh, the 34 car off the track. And Nasova's day has uh, gone very well, unfortunately for Nasova. That's going to drop her back quite a few positions. And uh, clearly Arto Kakinen's day hasn't gone much better. He's uh, about to lose 13th place to his, teammate, uh, to his future teammate Matthias Taub in the 37 car. Uh, Taub and Kekkonen will be uh, moving over to the Gessler-Richter team next year. Uh, and here is uh, Nasova makes a peaking, uh, peak on uh, the three car of Savaral, and uh, Arto is making that 14 car very wide indeed. In his final start for Flash Racing, Arto doesn't really want to give up any positions either. Um, well, Arto and Savaral have sort of jammed up this pack here. Gordon Kim has joined the back, and there's Adrian Devereaux in the 26 car back there. So Devereaux is... Uh, looks like he's interested in joining this uh, this fight right here for position. As they get around Arto Kekkonen in the 14 car, Gordon Kim is going to try to make a move on Jacob Card. Uh, that's not going to quite pan out. Card gives him a little side check. Arto makes it while well, he tries to get by. And here comes the 26. Devereaux gets, is very quick off the snake. And coming down into turn three, Devereaux might have a run. Well, looks like not really because here we are in the next lap. And... Devereaux still hasn't gotten around the 500 car. Here's Jacob Card, three wide, into the snake. 
Gordon Kim in the 500 makes a very, very optimistic run. That doesn't pan out. Devereaux on the 26 sneaks by, and I think we've got a car off the road. Looks like Laporta, the uh, 913 car. Yeah, Laporta in the background has gone off the road. Jacob Card in the 7 car is pulling away from Savaral. Great run so far by the Canadian rookie. Here is Laporta spinning off the Spaniard. Oh, that's a... That's going to be a pretty hard hit. I'd say that's going to hamper him for the rest of the race. That's a shame because Laporta looked like he might have had a chance at points today. Devereaux is making his way through the field with just a handful of laps to go. Adrian Devereaux's actions now could determine the whole championship. It's not his at the moment, but if he gets around just a couple more cars, it might just be enough to take the championship away because Chris Johans, as of right now, would win the title in what could be one of the biggest upsets of all time if Johans is able to get rid of a 50-point lead in one race. He's already gotten five points for the pole, but he just need, he needs to get 45 more points over the 26 car, and Johans currently has that. Johans, make, Johans is not going to want to see this. Devereaux has almost had a move on Nasova in the 34 car. It didn't quite work. Adrian Devereaux really trying hard. To get around Yulia Nasova in car number 34. Nasova is driving for a job right now, and Devereaux is driving for a championship. So you've got uh, Nasova really trying hard to hold off the defending winner of this race, and Devereaux is, uh, well, he really wants his 34 car out of the way. He's got to run on Nasova as they come into three. Down the Girard straight under the hotel. And now they come into three. I don't think he's close enough. Oh, he may have getting, uh, given Nasova a slight tap there. And uh, not going to be enough. Devereaux does not have enough to get by Nasova this time. This is very, very close for the championship. Devereaux needs to get around this 34 car, I think, in order to take it home. And even still, I think he needs to catch Jacob Card just to take home the championship. Devereaux trying. He's still going at Nasova. He tried up the hill, coming down through the garbage dump corners. Nasova slides it just a little bit, but Devereaux does as well. He's not able to gain ground on the 34. Ian Cooper in the 777 car has lost a bit of ground to Chris Johans. I think Cooper is going to be happy knowing that uh, Team EFR is going to get two cars on the podium for this race. Chris Johans in car 64 is maybe on his way to pulling off one of the biggest upsets in, in the history of the Master Cup Series in one race. Devereaux has now got a run on Nasova on the front straight. Coming down into the snake. He looks like he's got Nasova clear this time. And with two laps to go, Adrian Devereaux's taking the position. But Nasova's coming back in the 34 car. But Devereaux has cleared the 34. And now he can set his sights on Jacob Card. I think that's who he needs to get by in order to take home the championship. But if he wants to be safe. But in the meantime, Scott Bates in the 88 car ends the winless streak. He didn't have much opposition as he cruised home to his first win in over two years. Chris Johans in car number 64 comes home in second place with Ian Cooper in third. But was that enough for Chris Johans to steal the championship away from Adrian Devereaux? Before we go through the top 20 finishers of the race, the 2011 TM Master Cup Series Drivers' Championship was decided by one point. The winner of the 2011 TM Master Cup Series Drivers' Championship is That one point that Adrian Devereaux needed to earn the championship, he did so with only two laps to go with that bold move around Yuliana Sova, who ended up losing 18th position to Marcus Leonard. But it was a very popular win for Scott Bates in the 88 car, who broke his losing streak and clearly showed the rest of the field that he still has what it takes. Started 12th, moved through the field, took the lead, and never looked back. The Oklahoma native will be back next year and with Ian Cooper in the 777 car along with him. Chris Johans finishes second, just nine seconds off of Scott Bates. I don't think there was much of a chance he was going to catch the 88 car because Scott Bates was simply too good today. 
Leonid Roderick came home in fourth place. A great result for him. Ben Atkins is one of the surprises of the day. A fifth place on debut. Round of applause for the young Englishman. Zelda Ashby in sixth. Holtzman ends his year from coming from 34th on the grid all the way to finish in seventh. Kevin Dwyer also hugely impressive from 22nd on the grid to eighth in the end. Great job by Kevin Dwyer. Alan Hodges ends his career as a full-time driver on a high, comes from 30th on the grid to 10th. Great job by the Welshman, who will step back to being a team manager and father. Blake Kamphausen from 31st to 11th demonstrates why Team Star USA are interested in him. Alexis Rainsward ends her Volpe tenure on another high, coming home 12th. Although, judging from her post-race interview, she was clearly looking for a little more than that. Packer Carroll will be joining Volpe in her place. And he came home 13th. Great run for him. Tony Durbin ends his tenure at Team Star USA, which, in, which includes many race victories and the 2007 Master Cup Series Championship. Durbin may be back at Team Star USA as their third driver, but it looks like Team Star USA will need his talents over in the ASCC instead. Calgary's Jacob Card, who started all the way back in 40th, comes home in 16th place. A great effort by the Canadian. Also, Yulia Sova in 19th, and Zach Duff rounds out the top 20. Rene Ricarmier came home in 21st place, and Duff just beat him by about half a second. Assuming there are no penalties coming out after Decatur, here are the 2011 final point standings. Adrian Devereaux beats Chris Johans by a single point. Johans led the series in top 10s with 11 out of, out of 19 starts because he missed the Cariala Grand Prix. Leonid Roderick comes home third in the championship, nine top 10s to his name. And uh, going a little bit further back, Rainsford missed half the season. Uh, she will relinquish, of course, car number one to Adrian Devereaux. Rainsford moving over to Champ Car. Uh, Scott Bates, top 10 in the points. Very good season for the 88 team. Ian Cooper, his teammate, all the way back in 14th place. Cooper uh, didn't even race at most of the season. He came in uh, sort of late in uh, lieu of Charlie Waters being injured. Uh, Alan Hodges ends his career as a full-time driver uh, on a high. Tom Delgado, Yamino Tenchi, both dominated the early part of the season, but uh, neither of them wound up in the top 10 of the final point standings. Franz Redleck in the 94 car will most likely be driving as a third driver for another team or going back to German supercars we're not entirely sure but he's not driving for Gessler next year Dale Roswell we're not sure what he's doing either and I hope Roswell finds a good drive because he had a very good season despite being stuck with a uh, fairly difficult car that's all for this season in the TM Master Cup Series I'll see you in 2012